No. Okay, hi people, it's Angie and Andy. Um, overdue on reporting on the sentencing of Wilfred Wong, Anka Hill, Janet and Ted Stevenson, and um, Chris Petley Ellis and Jane Going Hill. And I, I personally am glad we've taken a few days out because as all along this case, the original mainstream media reporting of the sentences was inaccurate. So I shared on Twitter, and I'll share this now, um, a mainstream media article saying Wilfred got 17 years and, you know, 2.5 to run concurrent and Anchor got 15 and the, the therapist got 14. I think her husband got eight. The others got four. But I had messages coming through at the same time on WhatsApp from the three different witnesses connected to the case that have been in touch. And they were saying, the, these figures are not right. Like she's, she's saying, I, I was told from the court that, that it was 22 years and 20 years and blah, blah, blah. So I want to know straight away why, right from the get go, there's been inaccurate reporting on this case. It's been very distressing. I have been very unwell physically and in a state of shock over this sentencing. The good news is, did you hear Sabine is getting out on November 30th? No, I heard that. Yeah, she served four and a half years of the nine. And she could have been repatriated to Germany in January, but DC Steve Martin held it up. All he had to do was sign what had been agreed on, which was that she could finish her sentence in Germany as a German national. And it's only now, November, Jan January, she could have been sent to Germany. But November the 20th, she's being discharged from Bronzefield, sent back to Germany, um, technically on licence. But in Germany, alleged stalking and harassment is only a two-year sentence. So she'll probably just get, she's already served four and a half. She'll probably just get released. So, so that's good news. But... But the, the mainstream media reporting on the Wong sentencing has once again been uh, inaccurate. So have we got time to, well, I'll just read out or show the evidence. I know we like evidence, don't we? Share screen. I'll just go to my Twitter. I've upgraded to Windows 10, so it's hard to find everything. Remote connection site, what earth is that about? Remote yeah. connection site. <coughs> You're attempting to reach a site that allows remote connection to us. Um, Sorry, Andy. Has nobody actually got any uh, confirmation from the from the people themselves, from the, from the Stevensons or from Wong's or? Well, yeah, I've got I've got WhatsApp messages, but funnily enough, our friend Sharon Gale has done some fairly good work on, on the Wilfred Wong case. I don't agree with her stance, and she's trying to say I'm in coats with John Wedger, which is hilarious. But some of the stuff she's coming out with is pretty, pretty accurate. So let's go there first, actually, and I'll show you what the actual... Because I, when I read the, when I posted the newspaper article, I was getting messages from two people connected to the accused saying this is not what the court said, this newspaper article is inaccurate. So let's go Sharon Gale and credit where credit's due. I've got a poem for her. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. So she posted, unless she's taken it down, she might have taken it down. She actually posted the document from the courts with the actual real... Um, sentences so, but it's all it's all um it's going to be a long time and support of wilfred wong some are loving from the satley i don't know where she fucking there she has such random <laughs> titles jeanette archer blah blah yeah it's a bit of a working video people sorry any old excuse to do nothing but stay I mean, I've, had, I've not um really i mean i've had a few people say a few things like but 
nothing's particular. I mean, I've been busy doing other things. Right? I know, and I, I'm following your work. And you see, Sean McGuire's in a bit of trouble too. Um, they're threatening to section him again. Are they? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's in serious. Anyway, age-restricted video. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, and Charmaine of the House of Mulligan has moved back to Ireland. So it's all kicking off. Shall we? So, yeah, anyway. Right, I can't, I should line these links up, uh, links up, maybe I will, but not right now. So let's go to Twitter and I'll, I'll read you the newspaper article, which has been proven to be inaccurate, which is something we've seen all along with this case. And we still haven't seen the coroner's report from the supposed suicide of Robert Frith. Yeah. Right, Sturgeon kept this quiet. Blah, blah, blah. The police telling you to challenge plainclothes policemen. Um, here it is. Right. Now, this is a predictable mainstream media report, but once again, inaccurate. And like, I was getting, what's this? I'll accept. I was getting WhatsApp saying, message me and said, Wilfred got 22 years. And then the friend of Janet and Edward WhatsApped me and said, no, I've got it direct from the court. What the newspaper's reporting is wrong. And you have to ask yourself, why, why is the newspaper reporting? Why have they done this all the way along this case? So anyway, why I just quickly- they, Why would they report less if it was more? That would make- I know, I know. It's just the whole case has been uh, clouded or clouded in, Obfuscation, that's the only thing really to say. Right, let's just read this quickly. I, I, I don't want to add North Wales get away. No, thanks. North Wales Live has done a lot of coverage. It hasn't hit the mainstream that much. Right. Wilfred Wilmer, Pied Bull Court, Galen Place, Camden, London, leaving Clandard, no magistrate's court. A gang who plotted the chilling abduction of a child they claimed was at risk of satanic abuse have been jailed for a total of 63 years. Gang leaders, Anka Hill, 51, Wilfred Wong, 56, snatched a child from their foster carer as they arrived home from school on November 4th, 2020. Hill wrestled the child from their car seat, bear in mind this is the mother, and put them in a waiting vehicle while Wong held a knife to the foster carer's throat before slashing one of the carer's car tires to prevent them from following. Now, other reports say he held a knife to her face. Some reports say it was, a, 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 you know, a kind of not quite a fishing knife, but what's nothing. That, what's, that, what's, that, what's that dad of child abducted by kidnapped gang, falsely labelled a paedophile? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's kicking off from every angle. So they've got another... Uh, right, we can't say his name technically, although... Really, the only name not to be named is the child. So we're naming Anka Hill. So I'll just say it. Les Hill of Cornwall and Anglesey, paramedic, specialising in out-at-sea emergency medical treatment, plus assessment of disability uh, claimants. So now it looks to me a little bit like a Ricky Dearman BBC thing, where no, he's, no, get, he's this, getting... This, this, is that him? I mean, there's a picture yes, Hill of is the father. attacked by suspect on the left hand side. On, sorry, yeah. on your right hand side there, yeah. Wicked that and does, that doesn't look like the same man that was no, on. No, that's that. not no on no, you mean my recommended list? Yeah. Paramedic what? attack by suspected stabbing oh stabbing victim. Oh sorry, it's a different one. No, mind you. I don't know. It's a similar photograph that we, you know, that you've similar to what we showed in earlier broadcasts. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the current part of the current possible psyop is now the poor daddy is being sympathised with for having been falsely accused, even though Anchor wasn't allowed to introduce four hundred pages of evidence. Right. So it says they then met Janet and Edward Stevenson, <coughs> who at this point I think might be innocent. Um, Andy, I'll, I'll tell you why who had hired a car to take the child away from Wales. But we've heard from two different uh, clients of Janet Stevenson, who's, who's 
She's like a modern day Dr. Joan Coleman. She's a therapist specializing in SRA survivors. But we've heard from two different survivors saying she introduced us to Wilfred Wong and then he asked us to take part in a rescue mission and be well paid for it. But guess who else, who else has interviewed a survivor? Danny Jones. Danny Jones has got what sounds to me like another credible ex-client um, of Janet Stevenson who was attempted to be groomed by Wilfred Wong. So anyway, I'll carry on. Into the case, into this... Into this um... Child rescue mission. Like, how many people does it take? Why, why... This is one of my concerns about Wilfred, is why would he keep approaching vulnerable... Um, SRA survivors and their partners and saying, will you come on a rescue mission? You'll get a couple of grand out of it. It doesn't sit... The, the other one, the one, the one, I, the one that I... The, I, don't think, <coughs> I don't think money was... Um, I don't recall money being mentioned, but I do know that he was asked to get a van and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I don't, I don't recall money being... In, uh, yeah, and people being asked to build, like, false... You know, yeah, for, I know the other one said that. And I also believe that the other one was um, the, the other one that got introduced. I think it was Wilfred Wong that introduced her to uh, Janet Stevens. But don't leave, no, don't leave out the um, the church. Uh, the church, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and then they got him into the church, yeah, yeah. There's the Jubilee Ministries and there's a church called Oasis, which one of Anchor's family members said to us, what the hell is Les doing going to this church? And then other people that have come forward to you and I have said, um, Jane Going Hill goes to that church and Christine Petley Ellis goes to that church and they tried to get Karen, I can't remember Karen's last name, they tried to get, so there is a church involvement. And I know people are getting whipped up into hysteria, like with Sharon Gale saying, oh, it's all born again Christian cult, fundamentalist Christians, and Angie's John Wedge's best friend, and how the hell did Anchor Hill's family contact Angie? Well, just to say, first of all, a Porsche is a is called a Porsche, right? Sharon Gale. And Anchor is called Anchor. It's not Porsche and it's not Anki, right? Just to let you know. But can you just confirm that Anchor's, I've never spoken to Anchor Hill. I've spoken to many others around the case, you know, advocates and best friends and family members. But can you confirm how did I first get contact with Anchor's German family? Do you want me to confirm that? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, well, yeah of course, because yeah, then they contacted me. Yeah, thank you. And also then they contacted you. Yeah. Thank so you. They, but they got in touch with me first. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think there was um, was it? I forget the name now. Florian. 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 Yeah, Florian. Yeah. Florian reached out to you. Yeah. Then you shared his email with me, and then he said he was struggling with the translation with the language barrier. Yeah. So then I answered in my kind of almost fluent German, and he said, "Oh, thank God, can we talk this way?" And then he put us in touch with the father. Yeah. But Sharon Gale is saying, uh, you know, because as she calls her Anki, contacted me. And how could that happen unless I was part of the cult and I'm in cahoots with John Wedger? Now, I just want to say this as well. Right. I've been exposing John Wedger and Bill Maloney, but very more John Wedger for at least two years. And that was how Sharon Gale contacted me. I spent three days looking at videos of John Wedger going back to 2013. I timestamped them and I showed up holes in the backstory. Sharon Gale commented under that and said, oh, thank God, there's somebody else out there. I've been trying to expose them for years, blah, blah, blah. And I said to her, oh, that's interesting. Please contact me. So she contacted me. I had not even seen her on Sean Atwood or Richard, what's Richie Allen, but she sent me the links to them. Then I looked at them. Then she rang me drunk at least five times until I said, I can't do drunk phone calls. Please ring me when you're sober. So she's got a whole different narrative about I swarmed her after seeing her on Sean Atwood. Total imagination. But she's doing some good work on the Wilfred Wong case. 
and she posted a link of the real sentences and they're not this, this is wrong, but I'll keep going. So Jane going Hill, who I don't trust, she's the brother of Les Hill. I mean, she's the sister-in-law of Les Hill. Yeah. And Christine Petley Ellis, I don't trust her either. She's the one whose boyfriend put the false bottom on the horse box and also went to the campsite of Anchor Hills and removed some evidence from a caravan belonging to Christine. That, that was that was beyond beyond the joke, that was. Because the information yeah. we got from that was from coming from within inside the, you know, which you know all the phone calls are being listened to, yeah. everything would have been listened to. So she, they allowed this guy, yeah. this guy, Christine Petley's boyfriend, husband, whatever he is, this biker gang, yeah. the guy who put the box underneath the horse box as your yeah. staple, to yeah. go down to a caravan and remove some evidence that she had said, like, get it gone. And when he was challenged, so, he said it was a Valentine's present. He's, when he was challenged, he said it was a Valentine, or she did, one of them did. Yeah, because that's where she put it in as a Valentine card. It's like fucking November, hello. Yeah, I know. It was a joke. That and was really... And he was, he was seen, he was seen um, going to that yeah, caravan to absolutely. remove it. So, and yeah, that was, that, was a, that, was a, that was crazy. Yeah, that as I understand. Yeah, that, the whole thing, I mean, I've racked my brains and, and, and every different angle you can possibly think of this one, and none of it. Can, I can't make head and tail of any of no. it. It's crazy. No. I'll carry on with this article and then we can talk a little bit more. I'm trying to think. There was another... Somebody else showed me a link from a camper. There's something called wild camping, which is where you can take a camper van and you've got a generator and you just go and do your thing wherever. And it was allowed on Anglesey. But some wild campers had gone on Anglesey, quite close to a millionaire's, or billionaires, millionaires and billionaires are plenty down there, and camped quite close, but still on free land. And they got chased by security guards and dogs. And the police were called, and the police checked and said, no, they're not breaking the law. You're allowed to wild camp here, right? But within a few days, there was a law passed that no more wild camping was allowed in that area. <laughs> so why, why? If people are just like wild camping on Anglesey legally, why would billionaires, security guards and dogs come after them if they didn't have anything to hide? And why would they get the law changed within a week that that was no longer a free wild camping zone? There's so much to hide on that island, I tell you. Right, so they said they then met Janet and Edward Stevenson who'd hired a car to take the child away from us. Yeah, and we said that Two others, Jane Going Hill and Christine Petley, acted as lookouts on bridges from Anglesey to the mainland to spot any police activity facilitating the car's uh, escape routes. Now, we still haven't got an explanation for the fact that uh, Jane Going Hill or Christine had the fake passport that was going to be used. Well, but it wasn't they a fake passport, it was a real passport. A real, of a different child. Yeah. But they took it back away with them, so they must have got word that this was a sting and something was going to go down because they were the ones that get four years, but they're equally as, as equally in, involved in the whole situation. So I think more so, I think they, almost, most definitely. You know. I think they, along with John Wedger, I think they helped set it up, to be honest. Yeah. And it says, the child was safely recovered when the hire car was stopped on the M1 in Northamptonshire. And then it says, right, we could just show this for interest. Jane Going Hill is joined by Wilfred Wong outside Bangor Station and Janet and Edward Stevenson at the getaway car. See, all very casual looking, and I know these people are in their 50s and 60s, but you have to know that really CCTV is pretty, pretty damn, I mean, it's all over the UK, isn't it? Like this, this is the surveillance yeah. state. It's just the mere fact that they can show, you know, it's funny, isn't it? The only time that any CCTV footage is used is when they, it's in their best interest. Absolutely, because all the other times they say the CCTV wasn't working, like yeah. when Jeffrey Epstein supposedly committed suicide. There's yeah. Janet and Edward, 67, 69. He got eight years. She supposedly, we can't establish, maybe 15, maybe 20. 
which I feel was a bit harsh. I, I, I feel was a bit harsh. It's all absurd. All the sentences are ridiculous. It's Sabine McNeil and Carl Beach all over again. But they did stand by their, they did stand by the, 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 their conviction by saying what they was. They was the only ones, because like we said, exactly. if that was the mission that you was going in there for, you would all be shouting out. That's it. The only one who said, I'm a grandmother, I'm a therapist, I thought I was rescuing a child in extreme trauma and um, I feel conned because because Wilfred in his defense unless he was drugged or tortured he threw them under the bus yeah he said he didn't he didn't know they had a child he was just getting a lift back to what's meant furious no, that's a different thing yeah um David no Edward and ja uh, Janet Stevenson both I think they were the most honest um, witnesses in the whole case. She said, I'm a grandmother, I thought I was doing a good thing. Um, child was extremely traumatized. I, I, I suggested turning back three times. Um, and the husband said, I don't, this is a nightmare going on in front of our eyes. And I'm astounded that Wilfred said he didn't know what the plan was. Um, and that he just accidentally stumbled on us with a child. And um, I don't know, that I just feel that they, they might. Now, Janet Stevenson did apologize to the girl that got, the, the woman that got not guilty. She was so lucky. Karen, I can't remember her last name, but she got completely not guilty, insufficient evidence and released after nine months. And apparently um, Janet Stevenson uh, apologised to her and said, I'm so sorry for getting you involved. I had no idea. So there's been lots of lots of first-hand evidence from the court case. I'm going to plough on a bit more, try not to make this too long, but 151, denied conspiracy to kidnap and possession of a bladed article, but was convicted after a trial in August. Now, conspiracy to kidnap, which was of an eight-year-old with his mother and several mental health professionals, and possession of a bladed article. I could do a whole video on paedophiles and police getting four month sentences or getting, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. ha, th this, there's something stinks. There's something stinks, right? He was jailed for 17 years. Now this is apparently inaccurate. For conspiracy to kidnap, he received a further two years and six months for possessing a knife to run concurrently which means that's still 17 years, but other more reliable sources are saying he got 22 years. Janet Stevenson and Edward, both blah, blah, denied conspiracy to kidnap, but were convicted after a trial. Now, I think she's going to appeal. They were jailed for 15 years and eight years, respectively. Now, I've been told she got 20, not 15. So, um, you know, it will all come out. They kissed and hugged in the glass-fronted dock before being led away by dock officers. That's them. Three women pled guilty to conspiracy to kidnap. That was Jane Going Hill, um, what's her name? Christine Petley Ellis, and I think Anka, because they, they wouldn't let Anka change her plea. They told her she could change it, but they wouldn't let her enter any evidence whatsoever. So Anka Hill was jailed for 14 years and five months. Weird sentences. It's just it's just beyond of every everything that go computes in anyone's head. I mean, why would you have so many people just to kidnap one child? Children, mm. they, don't, they don't do this. So there was a reason for kidnapping that particular child. And then why is it because there's other things about it? You know, you've got the inf information that Anchor was never allowed to show, that which which was which was crazy in the beginning. Why I, that, that I should have been first that. out? Huh? I've been sent that four hundred page evidence bundle. Yeah, like, exactly. Same here. Yeah, so maybe, you know, maybe now they're in the stage of appeal, we should release it. But the other thing, there was something else that just jumped out at me as I read that. Um, I mean, this is, this is that's, and that's stating that the child himself said that. So this is, this is coming from the child himself that, you know, what Anchor's actually said, what, the, what this whole mission, if you work on the basis of what that, um, what says, is, is that, that exactly what it was? That was a rescue for that child. I do suspect, it, like like the hamster case, it's not black and white. I yeah. do suspect Anchor Hill, I'm still curious, 
She, she bought a vast amount of acreage on Anglesey when she ran away from Cornwall. But if you're running away from a supposedly abusive husband in a Peterborough ring, why would you run to his hometown where his brother lives and others and church and so on and where you'd get followed to? And I was also, we were also told by Florian that she had rented out a substantial amount of her acreage to other parties. And it seems like from the information we were given about the caravan and um, ca uh, Christine Petley Ellis's boyfriend going to the caravan and removing evidence, it seems there might have been a swingers club or something going on. Like God knows. I don't know. But there's definitely something. It's like, you know, Fifty Shades of Fucking Grey. Do you know? It's, anyway, let's plow up. There was something else occurred to me, but I can't, it's gone out of my head again. I'll try and carry on. Um, yeah, James, yeah, blah, blah. We've given a four year, they're on a judge. I'm satisfied with the leaders of the conspiracy and recruited others. Um, I, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I've also been contacted by a therapist that was asked to give a, she's a Cambridge graduate and she's a expert child art, art psychotherapist specializing in child abuse. And she was asked to give a, a report on the child's artwork. But the person that asked her was not Wilfred Wong, it was John Wedger. He approached her directly and said, I'm working on a case with Wilfred Wong. Will you do an expert analysis of the child's artwork? And then, <clears throat> then was told, oh, there's not much money in the pot. Do you mind if we don't pay you? And like expert witnesses can earn a lot of money and put a lot of work in, but she was, and she did it for nothing. But she said, technically, because it was delivered by John Wedger, for there to be a complete chain of custody, she would have needed to meet the child and, and even see the child doing the artwork, you know? Yeah. But anyway, that's part of the bundle that's been sent to you. It says, all six of you are acting as vigilantes, taking the law into your own hands. Your motivation was to rescue child aid to prevent harm. Well, that's huge. That's huge. How does a paedophile get four months or a police paedophile or child pornographer get out on bail or a DuPont family member get no jail time at all because he might have a hard time in jail? How does this happen? Ted Heath never gets caught living. Jimmy Savile never gets caught living. Leon Britton never gets caught living. Uh, Greville Jalen never gets caught alive. But even though they can say here, your motivation was to rescue a child you thought to be in extreme danger and they get 22 years. No, something, something's, something's up. It says your motivation, but you all had sufficient intellects to realize that kidnap might cause harm to a child. If you're trying to rescue a child from satanic ritual abuse, yes, a kidnap would be traumatizing but nothing like, it's like when people say, why were Elisa and Gabriel's faces put online and their voices and their testimonies, but compared to what they were saying was happening to them, being out on the internet is just peanuts. It's just nothing. That it's goes out the window because Ricky Damon put their faces on there. They did it on the eBay thing, I know. Right, so you knew the family courts were involved, but you thought you knew better. Well, the family courts had failed. That's why the mother allegedly got desperate and got possibly sucked in, first of all, to John Wedger and then to Wilfred Wong. And then the, Paula Mann, that's actually a man called, I think he's called Cliff, but he's, you showed me that video link, I might share that, where he sees that an MP gave a character witness for Wilfred Wong in the trial. And um, it's just, it's. I can't get past the House of Commons lobbyist thing. So a Crown Prosecution Service spokesman said the group had made a remarkable amount of planning. Well, it wasn't very fucking good, was it? All in front of CCTV, including sourcing a passport, which was allegedly from Christie, with a view to take the child abroad. Now, something I object to is they, call, they say they're about to traffic the child to Europe. Um, but how is it trafficking if the mother wanted to allegedly rescue the child and take the child to France or Germany to grow up 
in safety. So I don't accept the trafficking moniker there. I'll just show you Paul Amand's link that you showed me earlier. I'd already watched it and he's doing some good work, but again, he's, you know, none of us has all of the, all of the, um, none of us has all of the pieces of the jigsaw, which is why we do this. P-A-U-L-A. Yeah. Paul Amand. Right. Wilfred Wong and Sir Edward Lee, MP, child kidnapped. Now, he just, he's only had 73 views. It's a tiny channel. It's worth following. I don't agree with everything. Dad of child abducted by kidnapped gang, falsely labor people. He says it as it is. He, he just, you know, he sees, sees it and says it. So, you know. He... Yeah, but sometimes he's prejudiced. Because no, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's right. I'm, I'm just saying he, it and says it. He, says, he says what he sees. Yeah, no, I really like, like his work. It's his opinion. He, he gives yeah, you, he, he gives he you was, his honest opinion. And he was at a Christmas party at UK Column in 2013, where John Wedge's uh, bodyguard, Dillo, punched Brian Gerrish in the face and punched a woman. And he cleverly started recording, as well as calling the police. And then Brian Gerrish is heard saying, yeah, Dillo is, is Lou Collins' boyfriend and he's been violent with her as well, and blah, blah, blah. So he's he's recorded everything since 2013, at least. He's an MK Ultra survivor of a Tavistock-type project carried out in HMP Grendon. He's, he's, he's brilliant. But because he was falsely accused of being a pedo, he's feeling empathy for this dad. But this dad is being treated. I wouldn't be surprised if Victoria Derbyshire or somebody doesn't interview him. He's being portrayed as, oh, you poor thing. Did your naughty ex-wife say you were a paedophile? That must be terrible for you. You know, so I don't know, whatever. You know Ella got out on bail in August. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good news, wasn't it? All right, so I, I just, other than opinion, I'd like to, I, I will give some credit where it's due. I'll try and find where she showed the link of what the actual um, sentences were, and they were higher than these, you know. And I did get another message from the ex-client of Janet Stevenson saying that she'd spoken to Janet in the prison and that she was fighting and that... Um, they weren't going to let this slide. But the, the biggest point I wanted to make, I'm definitely feeling like Wilfred Wong. I've, I've got more questions than answers. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I feel even bad saying it, but like, I've got more questions than answers about him. And I'll give you another reason why. Are you familiar with Robert David Steele of, um, yeah. The That's idea, it, yeah. huh? the one who died of COVID, well, allegedly. Question marks. Allegedly, yeah, but yeah. there's a guy called Quinn Michaels who's this maverick, genius hacker, and he's just done three expose videos, which I'm going to share as well. Robert David Steele photographed in the '90s at a deep dark web ha hacker conferences with the top hacker kids of the world and Robert David Steele wearing a Chinese communist Red Army um, beret. And he's saying he was never CIA. He's either a Chinese or a Russian agent. And the evidence he's brought forward about Robert David Steele, he's tracked him down to porn distribution sites, to a, a website called satanic.com or something like that to meetings in the Netherlands, allegedly with the uh, Queen Beatrix and that whole thing, to uh, meetings with the Russian Mafia in Amsterdam. Uh, it, it seems like he's been a dark web hacker, communist spy since the 90s, hiding in plain sight, running around pretending to fight child sexual abuse and child trafficking. So it, it, sometimes it makes me just want to pull the duvet up and say, I fucking give up, I give up. You, I, I don't know who, who to trust anywhere, but, but I never trusted him. Never trusted him, never trusted Sasha Stone, never trusted Jerome Corsi. This is where people need to find their heart and discern, and I know this gets abused, but like if you've got a red flag saying, nah, 
nah, I don't get that. I don't get that. Trust it. Trust it. Because these people, there's a Luciferian psyop going on where they're pretending to expose child trafficking and satanic ritual abuse, and they're all actors and intelligence agents. The, the way, the way, when you look at it, is they, they are collecting the real evidence. They're collecting the real whistleblowers, and those whistleblowers tend to end up dead. Or they get given a sense of being heard, like the whole cult of Jeanette Archer. It's like you get a sense of, oh, I've met my tribe. Oh, now I'm being believed. Now I've done an interview with John Wedger or Bill Maloney, and so now I've been validated. And then you throw 10 or 20 grand compo at them through a royal commission, just enough to kill themselves with, because really there's been no justice. And then they're gone anyway. Then they're silenced anyway. It's, it's ingenious. It's Mossad, it's CIA, it's MI6, MI5. It's disgusting. But look, as long as we keep putting these out, I know people like Sharon Gale say, oh, how the hell would they be contacted by Anki Hill? Well, because we keep going public and somehow people keep seeing and hearing what we're doing. And well, the, the, the point is this, I mean, on people, I mean, I mean, I don't know Sharon Gale, but I, mean, I know who you mean by Sharon Gale. I've seen some of the things. And like you say, I mean, Sadly, she's she's on she's the pot. Sober, she's she's, she's on the alcohol. Right. So you know, what I mean, I don't really, I don't have nothing to do with people on alcohol. Let me just tell you one more thing about her. It's very interesting to me that she says she almost had. She spent a lot of time in Parliament, like Wilfred Wong, and she had a lot of support of a lot of MPs, and she was trying to set up a foundation to rehabilitate autism damaged children. And she was getting wealthy clients from Dubai and Bahrain, different places. And then she got sabotaged. Now, yesterday, she said it was by John Hemming, who's been accused more than once of, of abuse. And he sues people, but they, he hasn't won. Esther Baker accused him in the, in the Australian 60 Minutes, Lord Spies and Paedophiles uh, documentary. And Sonia Poulton went to court with him recently, but she she... He didn't win, but Sharon Gale said she got sabotaged by John Hemming MP, who worked with Belinda and Sabine, but she told me she got sabotaged by Karen Irving. She said her right-hand woman in her, you know, Heal Autism Foundation, which was being lobbied for in Parliament, much like Wilfred Wong, she said it was flying and her right-hand woman was a social worker, psychotherapist, and she says Karen Irving went after her and destroyed her and took the whole project down. A bit like what happened with John Winoa. Yeah. You know the way the John Winoa thing could have yeah. worked, even though it was very sad he got conned by the Nigerian scammers or whatever, Chinese scammers. But I believe John Winoa was a beautiful man and it was a beautiful project. It um, was a loss to the world. They, they, that was, you know, they, they were stupid. It, yeah, it was he had that. everything that he had. Yeah, he, he had the facts to back up everything. Oh, he's he beautiful. I, I, this is what I'm saying about you have to trust your heart. I knew this was. It's just the facts. I mean, it's again. I mean, at that point, I mean, that's what I mean. When when they did what they did to John, especially with him being pulled up at the uh, Heathrow Airport. Yeah. You know, and again, you have to understand. You know, how did they know? You know, how did they know? That's what I'm trying to say. All these, they're all in it. Danny Jones said it was because he knew somebody who worked in airport, yeah. airport surveillance or whatever. But no, it's more than that. This no, is what I'm saying about I mean, At the end of the day, yeah, the guy who told me, who the guy who told me it before I even knew, because John had not told anybody, was that Nathan Curtin. And that Nathan Curtin, yeah. they were all coming out saying, oh, we'd seen it on a previous live feed. So, you know what I mean? So that wasn't coming from that. Yeah, you know, they're insiders, you know, they're insiders, mate. Yeah, no, at the end of the day, but what I'm saying is on that day, that day, when they the police, there was 12, 12, 12, 12 police agents there, whatever it was, and they went through everything. They held him there for 14 hours, they downloaded all it got two two terabyte uh, hard drives, it got all his other things, all his computers, everything. So it got all god knows five, let's say five terabytes worth of um, information over his 30 years that John's been doing this. He'd got all of this documentation that had been through Queen's Bench and apostolated and authenticated in 2013, stamped and sealed by a fucking, by a QC. 
and uh, they down they copied photocopied all of those documents. They went through everything. Yeah. If he was a terrorist, they would have grabbed him. If there was anything wrong with him inside yeah. inside yeah, his yeah. documentation, he's him. also got the liens on the whole lot. He's yeah. put liens on the whole lot of this. And this was exposing all these criminals, yeah, that have stolen everything from the people. And John was just trying to give it back to the people. I know. I know. And, well, it was the, the, people, the people, the people, the people, some people was, but you didn't realise that the other people that was doing it. And even those people that did this, those stupid idiots that think they're a part of this club that he was exposing, they're going to be thrown under the bus just the same. I know, you know, I know. Stupid idiots, you know, and they destroyed such a beautiful thing by coming out and saying all the other things. It was crazy. And this is what Sharon Girl said happened to her foundation, although I believe it was her it foundation. It probably did, and that's probably what's driven her but to her drink. Foundation you know? it's, probably it's, it's, it's horrible to see. It's horrible to see someone, you know, you know, if she, I mean, I don't know Sharon, but I've seen she's some not other good things. In her, and I can imagine saying. why she's so fucking angry and pissed well, off. And that's she's why got she alcohol issues, and I think she's compromised a little bit. There is a video of her admitting that possibly, she, she definitely admits that her second husband, Mark Latter, only married her for legal protection whilst under prosecution for the murder of the baby. And she admits that she might have been wrong in supporting him. And when she used her brain, her research skills are very uh, great. So she- I, threw her away. Around I mean, I've seen her, she's got, and she's putting on the show. Why would you entertain with that? I mean, that's what I say to everybody. Why she's are you entertaining with these people? Because you know what they are. She's had you know what this, this that grob knob is and fucking all the rest of them. You know what these people had are. Said, and I, she's had yeah. And that's ironic because she said to me, Karen Irving destroyed my foundation back then. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm trying to say. If she pulled away from that, she'd probably talk to people. Yeah, she could probably make a good show of herself. I mean, I've just looked on her, hear her talk, and that's it. And that's... And if you want to get an audience, the last thing you're going to do is go in like that. So if she is putting some great information... Definitely, Hoekstead, uh, uh, Karen you know, Irving, if Karen Irving thought it was beneficial to... to Because the other people that are communicating with Sharon Gale is um, Julian Vane, James Hind. He was... like They were pressuring her to come to Ireland and report me. And... Um, there's Jack Smith, John Smith, you know, new trolls, any hackers, not hackers, but any researchers, please find out the IP addresses of Jack Smith and John Smith, because they're the latest recruits to the Hoaxstead crowd. But Sharon is swarmed by Hoaxstead, and either she's dumb as fuck, or she is cooperating with them, because she wheels them through. She, she had Muttley, she had... Um, she had, what was his name, David Simpson, then she had uh, Grobnob, now she's got Jack Smith. Like, she's wheeling through these people and then claiming that others are manipulating her. So I I, I, I will see the best in people. And when, like I said, when she's good, she's very, very good. And she's done some of the most cutting-edge research on Wilfred Wong, finding out, you know, that, yes, he came from Singapore and trained in law, he didn't sign up to the bar, but he was qualified to. Or if he did, he only was a barrister for five days. And then in the, the theory that strikes truest to me is he must have got recruited. He must have got recruited. It's like, instead of being a barrister, why don't you be a lobbyist? We'll make sure you've got plenty of money. Here's a little office in the House of Commons. Come and be a Christian um, lobbyist. You know, and it, well, that it Paul Amand's bringing in like the military complex side of the thing. You know, he, he's showing you know those uh, those psyops of these. Oh, you know, no. That Paul Amand, yeah, he's doing some good work. Yeah, you know, he's showing some good, you know, good connections. But again, you know, there's nothing yeah, solid, wounded. and that whole frigging thing it just doesn't compute to me and make any sense whatsoever. No, and it's the same with this Quinn Michaels that's now exposing Robert David Steele. These people are wounded, and part of what Paul Amand claims that was done to him by John Wedger, Bill Maloney, and Dillo was that they deliberately put rumours out that he was a pedo. And they didn't just put them out online, they sent letters to his, like his, you know, everybody around him. They did the same as they'd done to me. They did a real life campaign against him, like you and I have both had, right? So he he so he over empathizes with being falsely accused of being a paedophile to the point where he's possibly empathizing with Anka's ex-husband, 
who may indeed be not only a paedophile, but a satanic ritual abuser. So it's, it's a mystery, but I just think the fact that we keep putting out what we know, it, and the, the biggest compliment is that people contact us and, and they just go, what, what more can we do? Only shine a light. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's down to evidence. I mean, I would like to hear an explanation to what went on that day and why that happened. You know, why, why, would, why would somebody go in there? What, we said it from the very beginning, I'll still sing it. Why wasn't everybody singing off the same hymn sheet saying we were going in there to rescue the child? Absolutely, absolutely. It doesn't compute. And that could, be, that could be down to good police intimidation after arrest. That could be, you know, because the prime goal of a detective is to separate the accused so that they all start suspecting each other. And they so also- why would, why would Wilfred Wong say what he said? And also, I have to ask as well, why, after 27 years of him being the world's foremost SRA expert, why did not one survivor come forward and say, he saved my life, he rescued me? When why I didn't he even mention it? He's got his day in court. He's got his 15 minutes of fame. And now what, let's get it on yes, there. You've got exactly. your, you're in court. You're, a, you're a trained in the legal, in, uh, trained in the legal <laughs> procedures because you're meant to be a, a trained up barrister. Yeah. You've got your perfect primary time now. You've got, your, you've got the stage now to reveal everything and all yeah. your evidence. Yeah. And he turns around and says he found a bag. And he was just Back sleeping back, behind the bush. Slept under a hedge. You know what I mean? Come on. And didn't know there was a child in the vehicle. And and like like I said, I've got I've got a tiny tiny bit of, you know, maybe he was maybe he was tortured in prison, but it doesn't look good. So look, let's just Janet is definitely going to fight. Edward, her husband, who's sixty nine. Well, if he he's got eight years, he served one. He might get out in three if he survives. You know, it, it, but to me, Cat Scott said, if you're not sure that there's a cover up, you no, know, if you're not sure that a crime has happened, watch carefully the cover up. So to me, even though I was already saying I'm doubting Wilfred Wong's role, I'm on the fence about the mother, although I'm inclined to think she had good intentions. I think the therapist, and her husband and the psychiatric nurse that committed suicide, I think they all had good intentions. I think the sister-in-law and Christine, not so much. I think they were involved in the sting, which possibly involved John Wedger. But when they sentenced them to 22 years, 20 years, 15 years, whatever, that's a red flag right there. All you've got to do is draw up a comparison. What are paedophiles getting sentenced to in the UK? over the last 12 months. And you go, paedophile four months, uh, alleged paedophile, anti-paedophile campaign of 22 years. It's Carl Beach, it's Sabine McNeil. It's all, it's the same thing. It's supposed to make the people like you and me run away and get scared. Well, maybe, may, yeah, I would say possibly it is, yeah. I would say, yeah, that is probably the example. I mean, but I mean, as for the actual thing itself, the only logical, the only thing that, that I, I mean, I can't make any logic of it. You know, the only thing that, like you say, Robert Frith kills himself. Was he killed himself or did he, did, did he get killed? Was he getting killed because he was going to expose the fact that Jane Goenhill was in with this because she was still relation, because she was still associating with the brother of the father, the father that was being alleged to be uh, abusing the child. And the mother actually was actually, and she was being sucked into all that. And he was going to spill the beans on the fact that he was being set up. He was being set up with what, who, whether Wilfred Wong was included with that set up and jo uh, John, uh, John Wedger and everybody else that was brought into it. Because they'd already been caught trying to attempt to attempted um, kidnap before. Yeah, yeah, yeah twice. Uh, rescue, uh, after had been arrested twice. Her yeah. dad and her childhood friend said they'd already picked her up twice. Yeah. Between July and, you know, and the, the power, it, it, it's down to, I mean, you might as well call it Masonic ritual abuse, really, mm. rather than satanic ritual abuse, yeah. it's one of the same things, really. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm hoping the other mother or grandmother that's come forward to me, that's moved, ran up, fled from Anglesey, but is disclosing on her daughter's behalf and her granddaughter's behalf. Now, she's put the brakes on for a minute because she thinks from the four um disclosures she made through me 
they've made some progress and they've found hopefully an ally. But I don't hold out much confidence to that. But like she just said, somebody's offering to give us a hearing based on what's been put out there. So just put the brakes on for a while. But I'm not I'm not finished with looking at Anglesey. I'm not finished at all. It's it's well, uh, I'll still and I'll, I'll said it from the beginning, yeah. From the very beginning, like yeah, that I don't believe that was a court case. I don't believe that was no. an authentic court case no, with, a, with, with, a, with a case on file with containing evidence within it. I don't believe it's going to be there. Yeah, and I wish, I wish, I wish. It's like I, I know the same cognitive dissonance when Baron David Ward was telling me, I was expressing my fears to him, and he's like, "But it's not real. But there's no warrant. But there's that. But blah blah blah. blah there, no consent. But it's so hard for mind control people that are used to submitting to authority to actually believe that." We were contacted by three of the seven co-accused, either them or their close family. If only one of them had had the courage to challenge, this is not a valid court case. There were no. I, valid gave, I gave the doc. Yeah, you can the yeah. document to send in to request the case file for you. You know, that's all you needed to see yeah. to see if this was because it's what's on record. Because anything to answer to is what's in the case. Look what they did to John Patterson, man. I know that was just yeah. to my heart and Matt Taylor. Matt yeah. Taylor gets he gets brutalized online. It it breaks my heart. It's not right. It's just not right. I mean, like I say, why, why bother? With it? You know what they are. Know. You know what these people are. You know, you know. So why I don't I don't entertain with them. You know, they, I, know. I don't I don't tend to get it. They don't tend to bother. They, they no, might be yeah. saying stuff about me. They might still be saying stuff about me, but it doesn't matter. Then, it yeah. doesn't matter, does it? What people say behind your back, they can't come to your fucking face. You know? know. So it's in, it's not they're not they're not worth it. You know. And what well, what can they say? What can they say? Hiding behind fake fake profiles. What what good are they? What are you yeah. telling me? Anyway, uh, divinebar at hotmail.com is your email, right? Yes, yeah. D E V I N E B I B A R at hotmail.com. Mine is angiepowerdisney at gmail.com. Um, if Florian's listening, if Dr. Diedrich is listening, if the other people that have so bravely confided, just, yeah, one last thing. Sharon Gale, not docs, but like, exposed personal details about one of the three witnesses saying, oh yeah, is that? And she said her name and then she says, oh yeah, her marriage is broken up over the Wilfred Wong case. Well, sorry, that was, that was, that was doxy in my opinion, but look, I've done it in the past. All right, darling, it's not great news, but I just felt like we owed it. We owed it to the public to just stay in touch. Yeah. Is there anything else? No, I mean, no, I mean, just somebody, if someone got a logical explanation to what went on, please give it to me. I just only hope the truth will come out. But it's seven years, to, six, it's seven years since the Hampstead children were taken on 9 11, 2014. And to be honest, we're still, there's still no resolution. Ella got out on bail, but they'll probably lock her up for a while. You know, people who are saying that it was a child kidnapped, yeah, that was a kid to, to do that. that it doesn't compute. That doesn't make sense. I, I'll, I'll wash. I'll, that's that's nonsense. That's no, it wasn't a kidnap, and it wasn't trafficking. If no. a mother's trying, like Ian Josephs and other people have said, um, if your child is being targeted by social services and you're not getting justice, get out the country. I know people that have run to Ireland and run to France just to protect their child until they're 18, you know? So that's not child trafficking. Child trafficking is what's going on at the Mexican border, the Texas border, Arizona border, Netherlands, you know, uh, dark web hackers, underground bases. That's child trafficking, Catholic churches, Catholic orphanages. That's child trafficking. A mother trying to get her child to perceived safety. No, no, that's not child trafficking. That's not a kidnap. And it doesn't warrant 22 years and 20 years and 15 years and blah, blah. No, no, something stinks in, in, um, uh, I mean, there wasn't something anything. stinks in angles. Uh, no, I mean, it was crazy, man. It's crazy. Man. I mean, with, with the evidence that the mother's got to the fact that the child wasn't. Well, yeah, that, that should be a project. Know. That should be a project. All right, my darling, thank you for your time. Oh, no problems. We just right. over an hour. Well done. I'll put this up. Will you share it as well? Yeah, I'll share it when you put it on the app. All right, God bless. Thank you.